everybody, this is Hello Green Eyes, and welcome back to Seduce Me to the Demon War. Where we left off, things weren't looking so good for us. Um, we ended up in a pit in hell, basically, and we're trying to find a way home. Um, let's get started. Darkness surrounded my mind, my dreams remaining silent and hushed in the cool, calm black. No nightmares appeared, and no sounds were made. I was simply resting, and that's all my body needed. I let my thoughts wander into my subconscious, thinking about what was going to happen now. What will the boys do when they realize I'm gone? What will he do? I imagined him finding a way through to the demon world and pulling me back to where I belonged, wrapping me in his arms and swearing never to let me go. I would be relieved when we would be married just as we planned. How unrealistic was that? I had to be realistic right now. I was stuck, and the only one who seemed to be able to send me back was Diana and her companions, whoever they were. I had to trust them, whether I liked it or not. Eventually, I did rise from my sleep, somehow fully refreshed and calm. How could that have been? Did you have a good rest? I turned my head to see Diana at the door, arms crossed and leaning against the door's archway. She had a look of concern and pure curiosity on her face as she awaited my answer. I'll be nice. I'll ask how she's doing. Diana stared at me, slightly shocked. She Did she not expect me to ask? Huh. Well, yes, I'm fine now that I've had proper rest. That's good. Diana shook her head and stepped into the room, closing the door behind her. So we need to find another way to get you back to the human world. It won't be easy, but I believe it can be done by tonight, at the latest. Well, that's good. Quicker the better. Tonight? Really? Diana nodded and crossed her arms again, leaning on one hip. It will take time to get our shadow agents to gather the necessary supplies, but they are not hard to obtain, being that we're in a position of power. You must be lucky. If you consider this luck... What do you mean? <sighs> Diana sighed before casting a short spell under her breath. In front of me appeared a floating map, almost like a hologram. It showed me an entire world of mountains, plains, and forests, and it was... At all surrounded by sea and water. Diana pointed at a marker that had a purple banner at its tip. It was marked in the center of some mountain and forest area. It was also the very center of the map. That is where we are currently, the center of the abyssal plains. Diana ran her finger in a circle around the marker, showing a perimeter around it. Everything we need for the spell is within this area. It will just take time to gather the materials and prepare it. I nodded, understanding the situation. I was going to hopefully be able to go home tonight, which is better than not going home at all. So, what should I do till then? My suggestion? Stay in this room. I can mark this room as off-limits so that no demon may enter that would confuse you for an intruder and kill you. Yeah, I don't want that. I gulped. I did not want to die. As Diana made the magical map disappear, she shrugged. However, I cannot stop you from whatever you wish to do. Just don't leave the castle. I nodded as she turned to leave. As she stepped out, Diana looked back at me with a reassuring look. We'll get you back to the human world. I promise you that. Oh, well, that's nice. Finally, she left me alone in the room. I let out a small sigh and she looked up at the ceiling. I had to wait until tonight to actually do anything. What was I going to do? Part of me agreed with Diana's suggestion, wanting to stay in this room and be safe in case the guards didn't know who I was and would kill me on sight. My curiosity, however, wouldn't leave me alone and wanted me to explore the castle. I was handed an opportunity to explore a castle in the demon world, and part of me did not want to let it go to waste. I said it's a decision! I was torn on what to do. Well, look at that. I don't want to die, so I'm going to be safe. It was better to be safe than sorry. I fell back onto the bed and closed my eyes, contemplating taking a nap to make time go by faster. <clears throat> Staying in my room was the best option for me, both so I wouldn't get lost and that I'd be okay in case guards were on duty. I let out a small sigh before looking around the room. Was there anything I wanted to look at closer? Excuse me. Before I could find anything, I looked at the door towards the voice. Peeking in was the rabbit woman cautiously remaining behind the door while looking at me. Are you feeling okay? Uh, yeah. I am. Thank you. Please come in. I trusted this woman, despite barely knowing her. 
She assisted me into coming into this room, and she was one of Diana's comrades. I felt I could put my trust in her. The woman nodded before stepping into the room and closing the door behind her. She turned to me and stood by the door. I'm assuming Diana told you about the situation. Yeah. I'll be back home tonight. That's the hope, anyway. Yes. We sent our agents as soon as we knew what we had to gather. We're positive they will turn up before nightfall and will be able to cast a gateway spell. I nodded and let out a small sigh. It would be a long wait, but it would be well worth it, worth it if it worked. The woman, however, took a step forward. May I ask you something? Uh-oh. I looked at the woman, slightly confused. Sure, go ahead. What is it? Well... I watched as the woman reached up and rubbed one of her ears, almost in nervousness. What was she nervous about? Finally, she spoke again, releasing her ear. Would you mind if I asked you about the human world? The human world? Why would she be so curious about the human world? She was a demon that looked like an anthropomorphic rabbit. The woman hugged her large staff against her body as she shrugged. How are things like in the human world? Is there equality amongst your races? I've only heard stories. But since you're a human yourself, you would know. Yeah, this chick deserves the truth on that one. We are... We're... I feel we're all equal, but people aren't treated as such. My mind ran back to the social life of the human world. At least in America, we claimed to be equal, but we had major prejudice amongst our races, whether we liked it or not. I found myself not to be on neutral ground, not wishing to be extreme on either opinion, but knowing the difference between what is morally right and wrong. I looked back to the woman and shook my head, making her eyes widen slightly. We're not exactly equal. I mean, we try, but we're pretty divided. However, it's only one of many problems we face. The woman nodded before walking over and sitting down on the bed beside me. I see. Are there major wars fought because of it? In a way. Uh, we have marches and movements, but we try not to escalate it to war where I live. It's better to resolve things without violence. Um, I'm going to like call shenanigans on that. Because um, especially lately, there seems to be a lot of violence that's racially based. But anyway, continue. That's smart. I hope that equality can be found in your world. What about here? The woman shook her head, her smile turning a bit grim. I could tell that things were rough here just from looking at her expression. We have sort of a caste system here. What kind of demon you are determines what life you live. Demons of Lilith, like Diana are usually royals and nobles, while animal demons like me are much, much lower in the ranks. Aw, that's totally unfair. I could hear her anger and shame just from her voice alone. Were things really that bad here? That's horrible. I'm so sorry. It's alright. That's why I joined the Rebellion. We intend to make changes, make it better. I want to be part of that and help fix things. There was a confidence in her words that didn't match the look in her eyes. She knew something was off in what she said, but she expressed it anyway, as her reply to me. I didn't know whether or not to prod or keep silent. I wouldn't be here long, so I decided to keep my mouth shut. The woman shook her head out as she was scattering the thoughts from her mind and looked at me. So, you are getting married. You must be excited to get back with your family and soon-to-be partner. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm excited to go back. For a brief moment, I had nearly forgotten I was getting married. My mind began to wander to the one who was waiting for me, making my heart ache. As I looked down at my lap, the rabbit woman looked down as well. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you upset. But you will be home soon. I nodded. I shouldn't have let it get me down, but I really did miss being in the human world. I think anyone in my situation would understand, especially since I was a bride. I looked at my hand, seeing my engagement ring, and imagining the wedding ring that would make was made for me replacing it. Soon enough, it would be on my finger and I'd be able to continue living my life as normal. Pulling myself out of my thoughts, I looked at the woman as she stood and bowed to me. Well, I should leave you be. I will bring food whenever it is ready, so that you don't starve. Thank you, I, I appreciate it. With that, the woman left, leaving me alone in my room to wait. I remained in my room until the night came. I was given food which looked like soup? The woman who gave it to me apologized, letting me know that food was scarce until the upcoming harvest, which was a couple days away. 
Being that I was only staying the day, I didn't mind much. I was more concerned about what I was given to eat. It's some sort of stew, mysterious chunk swimming in the broth. that smelled surprisingly good, but who knew how it tasted? I'll try it. I gulped. I had to try it. I had to eat it. I hadn't eaten in two days, even before I came to the demon world. I was pretty certain Diana wouldn't poison me now, and I was fairly sure she wouldn't serve me anything disgusting. I lifted the spoon that was sitting in the broth, letting it capture some of the stew as it rose. I mean, it wasn't terribly scary to look at. I gulped and slowly brought the spoon to my lips, feeling the heat emanate from the stew. Like, looking at this, it's something I would eat, I think. I had a knock rapped on my door, breaking me out of my train of thought. Huh? Come in. The door opened to reveal Diana with a plate holding things I recognized. Bread and cheese. I let out a heavy sigh of relief before Diana laughed. I suggest not trying that. As good as it smells, the taste would not sit well with you. Thank you for the warning. Instantly, I moved the bowl to a nearby table, thankful that I did not have to try it. Diana handed me a plate and nodded, reassuring me that what was on it was indeed what it was what it had seemed. It's not much, but it's human food. Eat up. I will. I began to chow down, feeling the hunger in my stomach dissipate with each bite and swallow. The food I was eating, surprisingly, was delicious. As I began to crave something to drink, Diana chuckled and formed a small goblet in her hand, filled it with clear liquid that I assumed to be water. I took it and drank it down, feeling my thirst quenched before I let out a sigh. Ah, uh, feels so much better. I can tell. Take a moment to finish eating, then we'll head for the ritual. I looked up at Diana, suddenly excited. Everything was prepared for? Was it possible to go home now? As if she read my mind, she smiled and nodded. We finished the main preparations. We just need to head over and we'll start. I couldn't continue eating. My mind went into an obsessive frenzy of wanting to go home. I stood up, moving the plate and goblet to my nearby table. Let's go. Huh? Are you sure? I nodded, not wanting to waste any more time. I needed to get home, and I was tired of waiting. <sighs> Diana stared before nodding and heading for the door, opening it for me and ex exiting after me. As she closed the door behind her, I began to feel my heart flutter in relieved joy. I was heading home. Diana led me down the corridors to the war room, where I had originally arrived, to reveal a table covered in plants and artifacts of different kinds. None of it made sense to me, but I only had to assume it was for Nita for the spell to work. Diana walked to the table and took note of what she saw, nodding. This should work. You're in doubt? Have to be after the last time we tried sending her home. Do we have a human anchor? No. You're on your own this time. But we'll make sure you survive casting it. This spell should work, however, because we'll be using energy material. It will only require a slice of your energy on top of these items, which your guard can refill immediately after this. Just make sure you don't die casting it. This dude's such a douche. Diana smiled at her guard before turning to me. So, are you ready to return home? Uh, yeah. She didn't have to ask. I'm ready. Diana nodded once more before turning back to the table. She lifted her arms over the surface and lowered her head, muttering under her breath. As she spoke, the table began to glow, as did she. A dark purple aura began to surround her form as she lifted and arched her head back, staring at the ceiling. A glimpse of her eyes made me gasp. Warm golden orbs covered her blood-red irises, glowing with magic. She was deep within the spell, and I could only see it drawing energy from her body. The items on the table began to gleam wildly, light orbs floating back from them and dancing in the air above the surface. They began to weave back and forth with each other, almost as if the lights were dancing to a silent tune. The other demon stepped back as Diana moved her arms up and pointed at the dancing lights. Her finger pointed in the air, leading the lights to follow where it directed obediently. She drew a large circle in the air, and the lights followed like a perfect trail, spreading out to form a large void in the air. As they finally stopped moving, they burst into a bright light, causing the demons and I to cover our eyes from it. Whew! Sorry, that, that background music was really loud in my ears. Oh my god. Anyway, it engulfed the room, but quickly died down just as fast, revealing a small tear in the air. Diana quickly leaned forward and dug her hands into it before pulling the tear apart, revealing my bedroom! Diana continued to pull the tear open, giving enough space for me to jump through. Hurry and go through! This is your chance! 
I wasn't going to let it go to waste. I gripped the bottom of my dress and rushed forward, using momentum to jump into the air and towards the void. I could almost reach it. I could feel the air conditioning in my room right at my fingertips. I was... She will never leave this world alive! God damn it. <sighs> Every time, man. Just let me go home. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here because it doesn't look like that I'm going to get to go home anytime soon. Every time I get stopped, so hopefully we'll find out soon what's causing it so I can go the fuck home and get married. Damn it. Anyway, thank you guys for checking this video out, and I will see you next time. Bye.